In the early days, game development often costs way cheaper, like, it's impossible to compare the whole to the sales profits. If you heard about millions of dollars, it was probably for PR and advertising. However, everything changed greatly when the first PlayStation was released. The graphics were, to say the least, left much to be desired, but still the cost of cutscenes in Final Fantasy VIII could easily be more expensive than anything else possible. But today, it's not a big deal to spend 100 million, not including PR, to develop a AAA blockbuster. Hey everyone, this is Nightclub Play, and today we're gonna talk about the most expensive games ever. We should point out that most of the developers we're gonna talk about prefer to either hide or partially disclose financial details. So, sometimes I won't be naming exact numbers, but rather discussing these truly luxury projects. Aegis Montreal, the studio known for the last part of Deus Ex, was unexpectedly entrusted to finish the renewed and skeptically accepted trilogy about Slayer Crowds, but it's not like tens of millions in budget or the change of the developer brought much profit. The new team has produced just another cliché gameplay. And if you ask me about the ending, I admit I would have liked it to be more impactful and impressive. Not to mention that the scriptwriters couldn't even come close to the genius tandem of Neil Druckmann and Bruce Trelley. That shows how sexy their brains were in the second and fourth parts of Uncharted. The critics accepted the game worse than the previous ones, still it had not affected the sales, despite the sluggish start. With time, the Shadow of the Tomb Radio sold more than 4 million copies. The internet remembers that those developers screwed up Marvel's Avengers sales. Needless to say that after such flop, the fans are unlikely to get a new part of the Tomb Raider in the near or even in the distant future. Final Fantasy VII is not just a JRPG that was released on PS1 in 1997. It was the most successful game of its genre with more than 10 million copies sold, bringing popularity to the PlayStation brand itself, and at the same time topping the list of the most expensive projects, 45 million, which were spent on development only. At another 100 million, that's how much the marketing campaign in the United States cost. Final Fantasy VII has a solid combat system, unique characters, a thought through plots, and a huge amount of content. But all this content was added just because 25 years ago, the graphics were primitive, and it was easy to create the assets. By the way, two years ago a remake of the Part 7 was released. For ordinary gamers it was one of the most beautiful and spectacular games of the year, but for the long-time fans of the series it's something much more meaningful. It's an opportunity to return to the familiar worlds and live through the exciting adventures that look even more impressive in the remastered version. Another amazing game, more in terms of media campaign than in terms of development budget, is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. It took 50 million to create the next part of the famous franchise, and it took 4 times more to promote it. It's the second time the developers stepped away from the World War II theme. The title spoke for itself. The developers focused on modern combat operations and still didn't betray their principles and thought out every frame of the virtual masterpiece with the same carefulness with which Hollywood's blockbusters are checked. The variety of mission plots and locations brought Infinity War Studio an everlasting fame, and the game became the blueprints for cinematic shooters. As a result, it was the most successful launch of an entertainment product in history. On the first day alone, retailers made 310 million. Let's say that the development cost paid off very well. We also have another representative of the genre here. Today the fans of the series remember Battlefield 4 especially warmly. If 10 years ago the developers preferred modern conflicts, now they mostly lean more towards futurism of the First World War. Well, the Battlefield creators have the same ideas. Perhaps DICE didn't release the best parts of the series, but they certainly released one of the most iconic shooters of that time. The updated Frostbite engine was a good opportunity for PS4 and Xbox One to demonstrate their abilities and take the epicness to a new level. Also, the constantly changing setting and a well-written scenario by the standards of military shooters kept you entertained all through the game. 
Also, the cop co is what makes this game unforgettable. All this beauty costs just a hundred million. Can you imagine that the game about the eternally reflecting ex-detective Max Payne turned 21 this year? The Remedy Studios creation was one of the most iconic of the genre, but the Fiends, led by creative screenwriter Sam Lake, didn't want to be remembered as the developers of just one cool game. So, they sold their rights to Rockstar and moved under the wing of Microsoft, where they began to develop Alan Wake. Also, a dark story about a writer with paranormal touch. As for the continuation of the depressive ex-detective story, Rockstar took it upon themselves to release it, and we all know, those guys know how to spend millions smartly. Despite the huge image or setting change, Max Payne 3 turned out to be just as brutal and depressive as the original. It was just more cinematic, especially the clean transitions between the gameplay and the cutscenes. Well, with a budget of 105 million, it would have been strange not to release one of the most good-looking games of that time. It's hard to imagine a list of the most expensive games without a project about super cool sport cars, right? Of course, guys, we are talking about the king of racing simulators, Gran Turismo. Surely most of you, just like me, first tried it on PS1, playing the first or the second parts. Those games set a new setter for racing simulators and have remained with the best in the genre for many years. And while Gran Turismo 5 may not be a fan favorite, it marked the beginning of a huge decline of the franchise's popularity. Still, the game remains the most expensive in the history of the series. The series producer, Kazunori Yamauchi, slipped that he couldn't play any racing game longer than 5 minutes, except for his own, of course. According to him, the others are made half-heartedly and are not worthy of being called true simulators at all. Other developers were kinda offended, to say the least, and called Yamauchi a snob. They also recommended him to sometimes travel outside of Japan, where there were already Forza Motorsport 3 and Need for Speed shifts. But in my opinion, this Japanese creative isolation from the outside world made this game what it is today, an absolutely unique racing simulator. And it's not even about 1000 cars. 80 million budget or 6 years of development, although, of course, those aspects deserve some respect too. Grand Theft Auto games have always been respected by everyone, but politicians and moralists. But despite all the greatness of the legendary series, hardly anyone could imagine that the fifth part would become not just a good sequel, but a whole as cultural phenomenon. Since the third part, the developers paid a lot of attention to the plot, and that's on you to decide whether it was good or bad. But the fifth part blew the fans' minds. The concept of the main heroes, freedom to switch between them made the game so fresh and lovable. The developers squeeze everything out of sandbox mechanics. But oh well, you can't argue about the game's success, just remember the massive popularity of the multiplayer mode. It's caused such an uproar, Rockstar still earns millions of dollars and is in no hurry to announce the sixth part. No game achieves such popularity since the Counter-Strike 1.6 or World of Warcraft, which we recently released a video about. And thanks to the multiplayer, it's easier to make another re-release or some add-ons. Also, we'd like to point out that just like with Max Payne 3, the game's budget, about 137 million, is only an analyst guess. Rockstar hasn't published any official figures, but the publisher still reports about GTA 5's profitability. Only in 2021, eight years after its release, the game brought 1 billion. It's time to move on to projects that have already grossed over an outrageous amount of money. The first in this list is the controversial Marvel's Avengers, with a budget of about 200 million. Oddly enough, even with such money, the developers couldn't afford to pay the actors from the film universe to lend their faces and voices. The whole team is here, Captain America, unbending and fair, but in today's world, where not everything is black and white, 
This attitude makes his life harder. Tony Stark can solve any problem, but sometimes he creates new threats to humanity because of his overgrown ego, even though he never wants to. This is also how Marvel's Avengers works, a project full of internal conflicts and contradictions. It's not like the project lacks talent, ambition and attention to small details, but the developers tried to hit two birds with one stone and make the game enjoyable for two very different audiences. The game was a disappointment in many ways though, not just the character's design. A fairly boring single-player campaign offers a rather beaten and at times frankly ridiculous storyline about how a girl who has unwillingly acquired superpowers becomes a motivator for a group of morally devastated veteran superheroes. The multiplayer mode is just a disappointment as well. The developers tacked on it, but it turned out to be a scene of equally blind activities and bugs. Square Enix trusted that the Guardians of the Galaxy would become a success, as the Avengers game is just a flop project and couldn't be revived. Shit! The release of the first RDR was a real discovery for both the gaming industry and the Rockstar fans, who don't miss any of the company's projects. Despite the abundance of violence, the GTA series has always been about the irony, but in this case, Dan Hauser surprised anyone with the grim story inspired by Hollywood westerns. Due to the designer's efforts, the atypical for the gaming industry cowboy setting matched perfectly with the sandbox concepts which is a Rockstar hallmark. The prequel, which came out 8 years later, like GTA V, brought the game to a completely unreachable level. No wonder, Red Dead Redemption 2 received one of the highest scores in the history of Metacritic, 97 points. The storyline is too good to tell in the details, there is no any miss mission here. Each one stands out for something that will make your heart ache a little. The story cuts through to the bone, the characters are alive, and their problems hit too close to home. The dialogues are excellent, it would no doubt make Quentin Tarantino proud. By the way, the analysts believe that the promotion costs could easily exceed the game's development costs, which is at least 170 million. However, the main thing is that the promo works. RDR2 exceeded the budget and earned 775 million in the first three days of sales. It's hard to believe, but there is something that ended up costing more than RDR. By that time, Cyberpunk 2077 entered the active development stage. CD Projekt Red was already loved by millions of players around the world. It seemed that the audience was sure to anticipate any announcements of a new project from the polls. And the PR team knew it perfectly well, and therefore strengthened the effect by lavish presentations. Just remember the sudden appearance of Keanu Reeves at E3 2019, which blew up everybody's minds and became one of the most popular memes. The hype around the project was simply unimaginable, and the grannies talked about the game, about how it would be the best game ever, how it would revolutionize video games in general, and so on and so forth. But the air bubble made by the marketing departments popped on the release day. The console versions were targeted the most, as they were poorly optimized and the quality of the graphics was ungodly. The supposed long linearity and immersiveness, about which the developers trumpeted at every opportunity, didn't anger the fans as much as the blatant lies about Cyberpunk 2077 on PS4 and Xbox One. The haters joked that the company spent almost the entire budget on Keanu Reeves and made the game with just $2 and a dream. But no, the CDPR material showed that the advertising budget was slightly less than the cost of the game itself. 174 million. In total, it took just over 300 million. A terrible start to Cyberpunk, especially on the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, changed the trajectory of the project development. CD Projekt Red had to focus on fixing the bugs instead of creating new content for the game. It turns out that Cyberpunk became a great example. That's a huge amount of money, a talented PR team, and months of hard work don't guarantee a high quality game. Fortunately, after two years, we can confirm that it's safe to explore the world of Cyberpunk without any fear to your mental health because of all the bugs. If you have been waiting for the right time when the game is finally complete, well, the time is now. 
Go enjoy the cyberpunk world to the fullest. The plot keeps you on your toes until the very end. Johnny Silverhands, played by Keanu Reeves, is one of the most memorable characters in the history of video games. The music makes you feel the atmosphere and the night city view is too breathtaking to be real. Only when you're fully immersed in the game and in its huge open world you begin to understand why it is one of the most expensive games in the history of game development. However, Cyberpunk is still not the most expensive. More accurately, it's the most expensive among the games that have already been released. Ironically speaking, the status of the most expensive game in the history belongs to the project that is still in the alpha testing phase and for many years has largely been developed with the fans' money. In early 2010s, the industry veteran Chris Roberts, who released the legendary Wing Commander series, started thinking about making a multiplayer space simulator that would be a spiritual successor of Freelancer. After making a small prototype with Cry Engine 3 and presenting it at GDC in 2012, Chris appeared on Kickstarter the same year and started raising tons of money thrown without second thoughts by the fans. Less than a year later, he raised a whopping 2.1 million. Sure, Roberts isn't the last person in the industry, but he clearly wasn't expecting this amount of popularity. Adding the wave of fame and huge funds, Chris began to develop the original idea to Unmatched Heights. It should be noted here that Kickstarter wasn't the only source of his funding. Roberts' ambitious project caught the attention of private investors. It went so far that at one point the fans were promised not just a volume-growing MMO about space, but a single-player campaign as well. But no matter the shallow promises, the game's creation is advancing with total steps and still has no release dates. Basically, we will have to wait and see how a game that costs more than 300 million looks like. That's quite an impressive list of the most expensive games we've got. Don't forget to give us your likes and subscribe to the channel and share your opinion about those AAA projects and if they deserve the budget or not. Until next time, see you then!